Hi, my name is Tara Manisic, TZ Manix on Twitter and GitHub. I am here today on video three of our Kendo UI Heart View series. And in this video, we are continuing on our project that we created in the last video using the View CLI. If you're very confused, like, what are these videos you're talking about? They're listed below. <laughs> but today we will be uh, building out a uh, a way for people to listen to an audio file by clicking a button and then by voting clicking a radio button and another button <laughs> they choose which pronunciation they would like. So we're basically taking the components that we installed in the last video and putting them into the project that we created in the last video. So all the coding today will be done by Tosh Magosh. She'll be helping out kind of. Let's go ahead and jump in. So right now we are in the directory that was made when we created our project using view init from the view CLI. We can go ahead and go inside of source because that's where we're doing our work today. And the first file that we want to look at is the main.js file. This is where we will be importing button and the button installer and that is from the module that we installed from at progress. Using these buttons also mean that we want to import the theme that we brought in and since we're using Kendo UI we also want to download or import the Kendo UI library. We have everything we need. Now we use view.use to bring in the button installer, buttons installer. Last but not least, we add it to our components list down here in our new view. and save that. Now we're actually going to head over to the main view component, which is app.view. And per usual, to create, we must destroy. So let's get rid of practically everything here up to that hello component. And this we're actually just going to rename to what we want our new component to be, term list. So that means we need to change it here. It may have been just as easy to create a new file and get rid of this one, but and down here on line 13 we will change that as well. And I'm going to go ahead and delete all of the styling we have down here so we could do our own custom styling later. While we're in here, let's go ahead and make a new header. Okay, can you guess what that is going to stand for? I will give you a hint in my little subheader. Do you get it? <laughs> I'd love to hear how everybody uh, plans on pronouncing that as well. <laughs> Have our new header. We're pretty much done until we come back to style this one. So let's save that and move on to that terms list component that we just renamed. So we want to rename it here. I'm going to do this using nerd tree, which is what I'm using here in this terminal. But you can do this anywhere, um, you know, in your in your file structure, in whatever editor you're using. Just changing that hello.view to term list.view, and then we will open it up 
and prepare to destroy everything inside there. So now our template is empty. We want to change this class. Although we don't really style it, do we? Yeah, we do. We do, yes. Change that to terms list. And also on line 8, do the same down here for when it's referenced. And we're going to get rid of this message because we're not using it. I will also remove all the styling. Okay, with our fresh, clean, termless component, I'm going to go through and add some divs and add our first word that we're going to discuss the pronunciation of. So instead of you sitting through all of that, I will add a bunch of that and speed it up for you. Can you guess which word we are going to vote on the pronunciation of first? That's right, I'm not even going to say it. So now we are inside our div for term pronunciations, and this is where we're going to be doing our button work. The first thing we want to do is add a place where users can click off which one they want to vote on. That way they can click the button to hear the sound, but also uh, that's not going to cast their vote for them. So we're going to make this a radio button. We're going to set vModel so we can keep track to selected, so we can keep track to see which one is selected. We're going to call both of them vote so that they have to choose one or the other. And we're going to set this value to equal zero. I'll explain why a little bit later. And that's all we need for the radio button. Now we get to add our kendo component. So kendo button is added just by doing open bracket kendo dash button. And now we can set some um, settings on the button. And this is one of my favorites. We are setting the icon. Now, I like this because we can use it because we added that default theme. We added the theme from Kendo UI. Here is a list of all of these icons that you can use just by setting icon equals and then get rid of the K and I, just add that word there. So we used volume up here because it looks like sound coming out, which is what the button will do when you click it. <laughs> but there are a ton, a ton of other icons on here that uh, you can use throughout your project. Back to our project, we used that icon and now we are going to listen to the click event and pass it a function call or a method called play sound in which we pass a link to a sound bite. And we will go over what that method is later. We close out that kind of button. I'm going to say that this one is the hard G pronunciation. Uh, that is not the correct uh, way to type out the pronunciations, but for now, we're just going to put it like that. And then we just close out the kendo button. We need exactly the same thing for the next pronunciation, so we're just going to copy that and change a few things. First, we change that value to 1 for, to differentiate it, and then we change the sound clip. And what we have the button display, and we'll just put a J here for that soft G -ch sound. And then we have our whole place where you can pick or listen to the different sounds by clicking a button and pick which one you want to vote on, which brings us to the next div, our term voting. In here, we're going to add another kind of button, but we are going to make it stick out by adding the class K for, pri K for Kendo and Primary. And this basically styles the button to showcase or use the accent color. 
And we're going to again listen to the click event, but this time we'll do another method called onVote that we're passing nothing to. We're just saying, A, they voted. And we'll have this at say vote and close out our last and final kendo button. Now it's time to add the information that we're going to be passing to data down here and also our methods. The first thing that we're going to pass through is selected, which we talked about was that V model, and we had originally set it to zero, and it's our way to keep track of which radio button has been selected. We also, of course, need to keep track of the votes for each pronunciation. Now that we have those in place, we can get ready to add our methods. The first one we'll add is the play sound method that we passed our sound link to. And inside there it will be safe and say if sound let audio equal new audio and pass it our sound. Once audio has that, we'll say audio do that play function. All right, we have play sound. Time for our on vote. We're not passing it anything, but we want to say if this dot selected. So if you recall, we said had selected set to zero on the first vote. Well, zero would be false. This dot selected would be false because it was zero. But if it's one, which was the second option to vote, it would be true. So in that case, that means that they voted for the second pronunciation, and we want to up the amount of pronunciation to votes. Otherwise, it was zero, which was false, and that means that they chose the first option which should up the total of pronunciation one votes. Just so we can keep track and know that this is all going how we expected it to, we'll console log out this information. So if you notice in console I used this, but in the method I forgot to use this so let's go ahead and add that. Everything looks good, <laughs> besides my hair. Uh, let's run this at npm start and see if we were right. And you look here, we have an error. It looks like I was a little confused with button and buttons. <laughs> inside of our main.js file. We want to import button, therefore we want to send button. And one more error. It seems that instead of passing sound to play, I passed play to play. Okay, so it looks like we have everything that we wanted. Oh, my computer's on mute. Let's see if you hear this. GIF. GIF. Two different pronunciations. That works. Good. Now let's take a look at what we're getting in our console. Console. So if we hit vote now, we have one vote for one, two votes for one, one vote for two. So everything is working swimmingly. That is where we are going to end things on this first video with our voting functionality down, our buttons where they're supposed to be, doing the things they're supposed to do. In the next video, we will cover adding the charts so that we take this information we're getting from the voting and are able to chart it out using the Kendo UI 
charts. That is all for us today. Uh, hopefully, we will see you in the next videos. And remember, if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out to us on Twitter at KendoUI. And you can also reach out to me and Tosh Magosh here. She loves talking to people <laughs> at TZ Mannix on Twitter. And thank you for coding with us today. Hopefully, we will see you real soon.